Hello and welcome to the 100% Pure New Zealand Winter Games. I'm Mitch Tomlinson and this is day five of coverage coming to you from Snow Park. Yesterday we're at Padrona where we saw the free ski half pipe event take place and the guys and girls were going huge. In the women's it was a clean sweep for the US taking out first, second and third. But in the men's it was local hero Kiwi Jossie Wells taking out second spot just behind world number one Gus Kenworthy. Today we're at Snow Park across the valley for the free ski slope solo event. Now these guys are going to be going huge because the weather is a bit more on our side. The sun's out, there's not much wind, it's nice and cold and the course is looking great. We caught up with some of the competitors earlier to touch base on their thoughts on the event. Four years ago now I guess the US Open when I got first he got second and uh, I guess it was probably two years before that that we started together hanging out and doing contests. It's been like six years. We feel we, we feel real lucky because we got on the scene right at the end of the cab 10 phase. So <laughs> we got known from being able to do cab 10s, whereas kids have to be known for doing like triple corks now. So we got in like at the perfect time. Plus we still get the Olympics, that's sweet. Yeah, I definitely think that everybody is trying to go to the Olympics. It's a big decision that it's in there. And I think that everybody's quite keen to, to try and make it to Sashi in 2014. But at the same time, we still have a lot of other events like X Games and Dew Tour, and those are more in the near future. So those are the ones I'm striving toward and doing as many contests just like this one as I can along the way. Uh, my knees are actually quite sore. Landing flat yesterday in the pipe a lot. Um, so they're a little sore today, but never mind. I'm have you got your run dialed? No, I haven't actually done any tricks yet. Sick. Tell yeah, us about know. your new car. Oh, I got a new car. It's a Corvette Z06. It's uh, 0 to 60 in 3.5 seconds. <laughs> Not a big deal. I was like, it was fun. But um, I'll probably have to get rid of it because I don't think I'm going to do well in this contest. So. <laughs> 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 but anyway, it's really fun. It's really good to see all the boys again. It's been a while. It has been. Yeah. It's cool to have everyone down here, all the boys from... Uh, Overseas coming down here for the event and uh, yes. hanging out in my stomping grounds. Coming up now, Air New Zealand presents the free ski slope style from Snow Park. The course starts out with a couple rails. You have a few different options. There's a down box on the skier's right side, a down flat box in the middle, and a down rail on the left side. And then uh, immediately following the down rail, there's a cannon rail. Or on the opposite side after the down box, there's a tire to do a tap or a jib or something on. And then there's two jumps. Back to back. And after that is sort of like a whale tail butter box feature to end the course. Uh, there's a bunch of people I'd watch out for. Jossie, you know, New Zealand native, is always per somebody I watch. There, oh, there he goes right now. He, uh, top guy for sure. Uh, Gus Kenworthy, you know, definitely someone to watch. Uh, Chris Laker and Nick Gepper, those kids are young, coming up on the scene. Uh, should be a really good contest. I mean, it, the course looks, you know, super varied, lots of fun, different features, and uh, I don't know, I'm excited just to watch. First up is the qualification heats. With a smaller field for the women, they've opted for a three-run final. So let's get into the men's competition now. Top of the course, we've got Hamish McDougall, the local Wanaka boy. Oh, just a really nice, smooth switch seven. And into the money boot, let's see what he's got. Ah, oh, he's just coming up short. Not as good as it could have gone. I came a little short on the second jump, took a bit of a crash, but it's sunny, it's my birthday, so I'm having fun. Oh, happy birthday, Ham. 21, right? First jump, see what he sets up with. Oh, he goes for the double, but puts it down. I put it to his feet. Just getting a bit loose there. Nice right side nine. Really nice cork seven there. Jumps super are fun. super fun. It's pretty fast. Sunny day. 
what more could you ask for on the, on the Winter Games? Yo. Yo. Josie Wells, the Kiwi. Taking the cannon rail option, it looked like a 450 off there. Nice big switch seven and keeping good speed coming into the uh, money booter. Oh, just solid. Switch dub 10 and into the well, just holding it smooth. Nose butter five, all fair on their last jump. Jossie Wells, just solid run there, showing all the skill, all the experience. Next up, out of Norway, PC Foss. So let's see what he's got. Dub to dub and spinning out at five off the, that whale tail. That's got to be one of the top runs of today, Mitchell. Pretty sure that'll get him into the finals. Gopher on course out of the States. Coming in, switch into this first jump. Oh, cook, cook nine. So, and then he's gone opposite side spin with a dub. 180 into the whale tail. Oh, and a switch back here. Oh, that's another solid run there, Mitchell. All right, so Josh Christensen on course. Coming into this first jump switch. Switch 10 off the first jump. Oh, and he's pushing into a double and so smoothly landed. Finishes off this well tail. Little roadie off. That's got him through into the finals for sure. Wow, it, was a, it was a solid run. So it's shaping up to be an epic final. These guys and girls are going to be going all out. But before we get the finals underway, the ice hockey took place on Wednesday night in Dunedin. And before the New Zealand played their first game against China, we caught up with the crew. Winter Games are a pretty special moment for all of us. We're, you know, we're in New Zealand. Um, that's another special aspect that we get to add. You know, we get to play in front of our home fans, and um, you, the whole team's just amping and looking, looking forward to the Winter Games that you wouldn't believe. Yeah, the ice breaks are, are looking great. Uh, the last two years, it, um, they've had some fantastic results. In 2010, we finished fourth at uh, the World Division Two in Estonia. And this uh, past April, uh, we ended up getting silver medal. Um, which is the best result they've had in the history of the Ice Blacks, really. Um, so the team is looking really, really good. The, th the three teams that are here are going to be incredibly balanced, um, all pretty similar ability. So I think all three games are going to be very close. Well, we have an old foe, the Australians, coming across the ditch. Uh, we played them uh, two years ago in uh, the Winter Games. and in a uh, two-game series, which uh, we halved, one each, and uh, we also have the Chinese coming. You know, that's a new one for us. Uh, they were uh, at the Winter Games two years ago, so to have them coming along is, uh, is huge also. Last time we played China, we actually beat them, but that was the first time in ice bike history that we have, so they're, they're usually a good team and pretty competitive as well. Silver, you know, we, we'd say it would be all right, uh, but, but gold is only on our minds. That's the only thing that, that's, that's really up. You know, we've got two teams to beat, and we're gonna, we would see that as being a success. The first match of the Winter Games Ice Hockey Tri-Nations saw defending champions New Zealand up against China. And there's no love loss between these two sides. Both teams had chances early on and the game was poised to be an intense encounter. China looked dangerous in the first period, finding their way through the New Zealand defence and took the first goal courtesy of Ling Chen in the number 23 jersey.
This only served to motivate the Ice Blacks and less than a minute later they answered back with a goal through Joshua Hay with the assist from Richard Edouard. Two minutes later, China struck back, giving them the 2-1 lead going into the second period. Chinese goalie Zui Lu did his best to thwart the Kiwi attack, but after a relentless assault, his defence was broken, the Ice Blacks levelling 2 all. Brett Spears, the goal scorer, assisted by Simon Glass, making an impression upon his return to international hockey. Fifteen minutes later, and this time it was an easy one in the back of the net for Jordan Chalice, just 19 years old, but already three years playing with the Ice Blacks. China came back with a long-range goal from Chiang Wai Wang to once again level the score at 3-all. But in the third and final period, a change in tempo. New Zealand began to assert their authority and went on the rampage with five unanswered goals. The first went to 19-year-old Canterbury Red Devil, Chris Eden. Then back-to-back -back goals for George Huber, causing frustrations for the Chinese goalie, Liu. A local boy, Damian Watson, got another on the scoreboard for New Zealand. And yet another for Chris Eden, making it a final period whitewash for the Ice Blacks. The 8-3 victory, a successful and a satisfying start to the competition. Bit of a slow start, first and second period, but the third period was uh, awesome. Great to see those younger guys just kind of pop up and stand up. Um, and say that they want to be there and they deserve to be here. No, I think it's a fantastic result. I mean, at the end of the second period, 3-3, I mean, we're a little bit sort of uh, wondering what's going to happen, but I think the boys really dug deep and uh, it was a great result. We're really happy. You find a lot of teams at this level are, I mean, they're kind of even throughout the first and second periods, and it's just kind of the fitter team wins at the end and the show tonight. We've got a day off tomorrow. We get to watch uh, Australia play China. Um, and then uh, we get to play Australia. Great, we love playing them, it's that rivalry. Yeah, it's always a bit of a battle against those guys, and um, they're a good team, and um, yeah, I'm looking forward to it. It's um, certainly a highlight of my career playing those guys.